All right, everybody, stop talking, please. Everyone, <laughs> call the meeting to order here. Unless you talk to me first. Okay. You got. I have been in my office. All right, I'm calling to order the Transportation and Road Improvement Committee on this uh, February 13th of 2017 for the Village of Hoffman Estates. Roll call, please. Chairperson Stanton. Present. Vice Chairperson Mills. Trustee Vandenberg. Present. Trustee Newell. Present. Trustee Palafis. Present. Trustee Gaeta. Present. Mayor McLeod. Present. We have a quorum. I'm looking for approval of the minutes of January 9th, 2017. So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Anybody uh, notice any corrections or deletions that need to be made? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. New business, we have five items. First is a request approval of the following for the 2017 uh, STP resurfacing project on Bodie Road and Harmon Boulevard. A, uh, IDOT local agency agreement, and B, local agency funding resolution. So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hankey, do you wish to comment on this at all? Uh, sure, just briefly. This is the uh, local agency agreement is what uh, lays out the cost participation between uh, the village and the state funds, uh, sets the maximum reimbursable amounts which apply to both construction and uh, construction engineering. And then as a part of that, uh, the state just starting last year began, I believe it was, began looking for local agency funding resolutions, essentially saying that we have uh, the funds available to cover our local share. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion and second say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the ayes have it. Number two, request approval of change order number one to the contract with ALAMP Concrete Contractors Incorporated of Schaumburg, Illinois for the 2016 street revitalization project in an amount of $30,534 for a total not to exceed uh, $5,580,109. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hankey, do you want to walk us through what we're doing here? Uh, sure. Uh, this is accounting for uh, various cost increases encountered uh, during the construction, primarily related to Trillium Boulevard. Um, what we discovered um, when the work began, the much more uh, pavement patching, curb removal, and replacement uh, was required than initially and originally estimated. Um, that 
project within the business park was uh, to be funded with EDA uh, bond proceeds. Um, there actually was a greater amount budgeted um, as a part of the 16 budget process uh, than are needed. Uh, so while the, the actual cost exceeded what was in the original contract estimate, it was still well below the budgeted amount of EDA funds. Um, the net effect was it was about $130,000 in increase for Trillium Boulevard um, alone, but the net increase to the contract was only about $30,000 because of savings on other, um, other non-EDA cost items um, within the overall scope of the project. And uh, the last thing I just wanted to note was that there uh, are savings from <coughs> Two other um, items noted in the <clears throat> in the memo: the preventive maintenance, um, crack sealing, and surface patching and material testing. Both came in below the budgeted amounts, so there's more than enough offset there to cover the cost of the uh, the change order. And again, the other parts of the non-EDA parts of the project uh, came in favorably as well. Uh, Trustee Palafas. So this is only for Trillium, because I also see Apache Lane, uh, Arizona Boulevard, and some of the others that were included in their work. And, and, and as you know uh, firsthand, I didn't, didn't have a lot of positive experiences in, in the whole A-Lamp world of last year. I mean, they did a nice job on the streets, but the, park, the parkways were horrible. And in my opinion, they underbid it. And it seems like you know, they had to get subs to hurry up, you know, and do, you know, damage control. I mean, the, the weeds in the parkways were, you know, waist high in some areas. And I'm not exaggerating in one bit. So I don't know, is this money really for that? Or is it for, you know, th that's why I asked, is it really Trillium? Or is it kind of rolled up into bad work that they did elsewhere where they had to get better because they underbid? I think it, it's more related to the um, the cost increases for things like Trillium. Uh, we added a a uh, sidewalk pedestrian ramps and a crosswalk at Fairview School, which wasn't originally in the scope. Um, there were some additional uh, sanitary and uh, storm sewer, excuse me, um, improvements that were that were incorporated and, and again kind of encountered in progress. So I think it was the cumulative effect of those items and not the um, them bringing in the sub for the um, for the restoration work. Yeah, and, and I, I believe you. you no, know, it, and it, uh, yeah, I hear and what you're saying. And hope that's the case because I would hate to think that you know uh, where they experienced. Yeah, and I think in good faith, you know, and, and I don't know any of them. You know, they probably had the best of intentions, but, you know, once they got behind, there was just no... But the, you know, the quality of the dirt, there was just a whole bunch of things there that uh, became some issues in, in multiple parts of the town, other than just, you know, over in Norman and Winston, uh, Understood. where it was most highlighted. <clears throat> but nevertheless, uh, I just wanted to make sure of those things, so thank you. Mr. Norris, did you want to address anything? No? Okay. You're good. Anybody else with any other questions on this? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, number three is request amendment to the material testing contract with Applied Geoscience Incorporated of Schaumburg, Illinois for the 2016 street revitalization project in an amount of 15000 for a total not to exceed 115000 So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Any questions on this? Michael, do you want to just explain why the additional 15000 Sure. Uh, there are a couple things to point out. Um, one was when we start the um, the year, uh, there are funds in the material testing contract, both for the completion of the current year project as well as planning for the um, next year or next uh, upcoming years. Um, in going from 2016 to 2017, we have an increase of about uh, – five streets, five more streets being done in 17 and about a little over half a million dollars more in cost in 17 and in 16 uh, that weren't originally reflected in the 16 material testing contract. 
Uh, I did want to note one thing as well that uh, unfortunately I left out, and that is that the budgeted amount for material testing in, 16, in the 16 contract was $125,000, so that with the uh, increase of 15000 it's still under the um, budgeted amount for 16. Thank you. Any other questions based on that? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion and second say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Fourth is request approval of an addendum uh, number one to the phase three construction engineering contract with Engineering Resource Associates of Warrenville, Illinois for the Hillcrest and Moon Lake Boulevard resurfacing project at a supplemental cost of $45,008 for a total not to exceed cost of $144,799. So moved. I'll second. And once again, Mr. Hanke, can you explain what we're doing here? Uh, certainly, thank you. Uh, the, the simple explanation is that the, um, the contractor and the uh, subs which were awarded the contract through the state uh, process did not complete work on Hillcrest Boulevard uh, by the um, uh, specified completion date in the contract. Uh, in fact, it went um, 50 plus days beyond that. And as a result, the, um, the contract, or excuse me, the consultant, ERA, had put in their original scope completion based upon those specified dates. As it went two plus months beyond that, they encountered additional costs uh, to go out and inspect and reinspect. This really had to do with the backfilling uh, and a, a lesser degree, the striping of Hill, Hillcrest Boulevard, which was supposed to have all been completed before school started. It didn't actually get done until October. Um, as a result of that noncompliance, we did uh, file paperwork for liquidated damages with the state, which effectively assesses a penalty, uh, in this case equal to about $65,000, uh, which would come off the construction contract uh, because they went past the compliance date or the completion date as specified in the contract. So the, the net effect is since both our share of construction and construction engineering are eligible for 80 percent federal funding, the $45,000 increase means we're paying $9,000 more out of our share uh, towards the, the engineering contract, but that's offset because 20% um, of the $65,000 liquidated damages means we're paying $13,000 less towards the construction total. Um, so it's, it's unfortunate, it was a significant inconvenience um, due to the, the subcontractors primarily um, that were hired as part of this contract. Um, and it is unfortunate that it, that it delayed uh, so long, um, but there, there is the avenue to go through these liquidated damages to try to recoup um, some of that cost. Thank you. Anybody have questions regarding this? <coughs> Trustee Gata. Yeah. And I, I understand what you were saying. And when I was reading all this information and so forth, right? And uh, as far as ERA, they're coming to us, right, to offset what the cost was from the contractor. But yet, why don't they go after the contractor to get the money instead of having us contributing? Well, our, our contractor, or excuse me, our contract is with ERA to complete the construction inspection and construction work. Um, and there are in some cases that that it requires less time than they had anticipated. Unfortunately, in this case, it's requiring more. So there, there's really not an avenue for us to go um, directly to the contractor to recoup that cost. Um, it, it's a, I'm not sure how to explain it other than that. So when they bid it originally, you think that they underbid it? And now they're coming back and they're saying that uh, we didn't bid this right. We now need this amount of dollars. No, I think when they bid it originally, they bid it as if it was going to com be completed. Hillcrest would have been completed in August before school started as right. it was specified in the contract. Um, what occurred was that the contractor didn't meet that deadline and extended it. The work again was finally completed and accepted. And, um, uh, 
uh, in October. So Mr. Norris, you have something to then? add? Uh, Mr. Gator, maybe I can help. Um, the two contractual relationships are the village with ERA to do uh, uh, ins construction inspection. Okay. Also, the village has a contract uh, with the contractor, uh, the general contractor. Well, with, with the state in this it, case. Well, in essence, it's a yeah. state bid and it's a state, but we sign off on on that because it's a, our grant money, STP grant money. There is no relationship between the engineering firm and the contractor, financial at all, zero. Um, the way the process works is that, as Mike said, um, we put in working with uh, our engineers and with the state a X number of days that it takes to get what should take taking into consideration the potential and bad weather and all that we put in X number of days to get the project completed that was done with a cushion and it was important on Hillcrest especially because of the schools on on, on that street um, the contractor went well beyond that date so we will achieve liquidated damages with the state's help against the contractor. That amount of money, as Mike said, roughly $65,000, no, will be said. deducted from payments to that contractor. In turn, our, the state share, which is Fed money, federal money, and our share decreases because $65,000, it's an 80-20 grant, so it goes down. At the same time, the engineer's additional cost, because it went two months long, they had to pay their people for inspecting, is also split 80-20 between the federal government, state, and the 20% us. When it's all said and done, we make out ahead. It's a small amount because it's roughly uh, $13,000 and we get 20% of that, so uh, you're only talking $2,600 that we're ahead. but. Um, as a village, but it's not going to cost, it doesn't cost us more that this happened. That's the, the good part about having liquidated damages in the contract. So there is no contractual relationship between the contractor and the engineering company, and you wouldn't want that. We want them not having any um, tie to the contractor so that their inspection is completely impartial. So we are not going to lose any money. In fact, we even gain some. If you consider even the though, amount well, of staff time and everything we had to put in because of the contract or anything, right. no, we didn't gain anything. Right. But uh, from a budget to budget standpoint, yes. Oh, well, you've answered it. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Appreciate it. Yeah. Any no, other no questions, questions here? OK, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, five is request acceptance of the transportation division monthly report. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any questions regarding that monthly report? I have a comment. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'd just like to say I want to thank you for um, alerting the CN Railroad for the rough crossing at Chew Factory Road because it's really getting rough. It gets so much usage, as Trustee Gata, I'm sure, would <clears throat> excuse me, agree with me. So yes. Thank you for alerting CN Railroad. Sure, we'll keep pestering them because they haven't fixed it, as you know, noted. They haven't fixed it yet. Hopefully, we'll it's keep after. on their radar and on ours as well. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that. Okay, anything else? All those in favor of the motion and second say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. President's report. Yes, uh, last Tuesday, February 7th, I attended the Celtic Fest committee meeting. It's Celtic Fest coming up quickly, April 29th at the Sears Center Arena, so market calendars. Wednesday, we had a ribbon cutting for Hachi Japanese Grill and Sushi, 1461 Palatine Road up by the Jewel there. And uh, it's nice to add another restaurant to uh, the village's collections of fine places to eat. On Thursday, it went on the International Shopping Center Convention and Windy City Bulls retail tour event that uh, Mr. Kramer was influential in putting together with the Bulls. And uh, so we toured uh, our shopping areas up there, Sutton Crossing and uh, the Arboretum to show what uh, what is available for folks uh, and the brokers. I think we had like 60-some brokers there. It was a really good turnout, so good job. On Sunday the 12th, uh, Trustee Newell and Gate and I attended the PAC 290 Blue Gold at the Bridges of Poplar Creek. And this evening we interviewed a gentleman for the Cultural Awareness Commission. And... Um, 
I also taped the uh, video part of the um, State of the Village. It'll be given on February 22nd at the Sears Center Arena in the morning. So if you want to come on down, see what's going on in the Hoffman Estates, it'd be a great idea. That's all I got. Thank you. Uh, we have nothing in other uh, or items in review, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of the motion and second say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes <laughs> have it. We are adjourned. I would like to call to order the Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee for this February 13th, 20, 2017. May we have a roll call, please? Chairperson Mills. Vice Chairperson Vandenberg. Present. Trustee Stanton. Present. Trustee Newell. Present. Trustee Palafis. Present. Trustee Gaeta. Present. Mayor McLeod. Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. I would like to entertain a motion for approval of the minutes from January 9th, 2017. So moved. A second. Are there any additions or corrections? Mm -hmm. uh, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, under new business, we have nine items. Item number one. Request by 2090 West Golf LLC for a courtesy review of a Ricky Rockets gas station on the existing Shell gas station site located at 2590 West Golf Road. So move. A second. Uh, for a courtesy Actually, review. it is a courtesy review. Yeah, yeah. yeah for a courtesy. Let's say, stop. Yeah. <laughs> I want to leave you hanging out there, so I gave you the second. <laughs> oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> <clears throat> so they're requesting a creditors to review and we're allowing it how's that <laughs> it's pretty awesome of us isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. i would like to um please state that <clears throat> it's understood that your appearance before the planning building and zoning committee shall not constitute any village board endorsement support or implied approval of the subject property you also understand that the final project approval or denial shall only occur through official village board actions and I believe Mr. Heidner signed this um, agreement. And do you agree to this as well? Fully understood. Yeah. Would you please state your name and address for the record? Sure. Uh, Mike McKinnon, uh, 26 w 490 Churchill Road in Winfield. Eric Grabowski, 878 Summerhill Drive, Aurora, Illinois. Thank you. Um, and I would just like to remind everybody that this is not a planning and zoning meeting. Um, that will not go into intricate aspects of the project uh, at this time. Would you gentlemen like to give an overview of your project? Absolutely. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, as you know, Rick Heidner uh, built the first Ricky Rockets here in town a couple years ago, and uh, since then, uh, he's engaged Eric and myself. Um, we're building uh, several of these units, both here in Chicago and in the Dallas metro market. Um, uh, Rick was so enthused in how the unit's doing here uh, that he actually purchased the Shell Station in the northeast corner of Golf and Barrington. Uh, he had to wait for an existing lease to expire. The current operator is on a month-to-month -month lease, uh, and now he's looking to replicate, actually, I, I call it version 2.0 of Ricky Rockets uh, <laughs> for that location. I mean, the first one is spectacular. I think uh, what we're doing in the other markets uh, takes it to a whole new level. I mean, the car wash. Uh, well, while it's very good at the, at the existing unit, it's off the charts uh, of what uh, we're proposing uh, to redevelop here. Uh, I don't need to tell you about Rick Heiner because you already know about Rick. Uh, so, so, well, I guess I, we can, do you want us to lump them together a little bit? Or, no. Or keep them separate? To keep them separate, please. All right, will do. Uh, so the, so the, sh the existing <laughs> shell station's on 1.4 acres. Uh, currently, the car wash is closed. Uh, if you've driven by, you see the plywood on some of the windows. The convenience store is in quite disrepair. Um, obviously, Mr. Heidner hasn't repaired it because we're planning to uh, redevelop that site. Uh, currently, the, the site has cross access with both McDonald's and the vacant retail building to the north, and that access will be maintained. Uh, so the propose, what we're proposing to do is to keep the underground storage tanks and the gas canopy, keep the, most of the dry vials, uh, but completely raise the building, uh, uh, start completely over. And what we would do is we'd build a 9,000 square foot building, which would include a car wash, which would be located along Barrington Road. And then the convenience store would be about 7,200 square feet. And there'd be a 1,200, 1,300 square foot retail building uh, within that space. Uh, so very similar to, to uh, Mr. Heidner's existing Ricky Rockets, where the 
car wash is attached to the convenience store, except the one uh, is in the back up in Hassel. This one would be along the side on Barrington, and uh, the elevations that were provided, I think, show the, the quality of the architecture. You want to go into the architecture, or Mr. Grabowski? As far as? I mean, I, I think you can see the car wash ar architecture, especially right. along Barrington Row. I mean, the, all the glazing, um, I think they meet or exceed what, what uh, is currently being uh, provided in town. It's, it's designed to mimic the building as we have over on um, Barrington and Hassel as well. Did you, did you bring any um, boards or anything for the audience to also view? We brought a PowerPoint, but we weren't sure how to uh, connect that up this evening. <laughs> Yes. Uh, perfect. Well, if they have a PowerPoint, uh, if as long as it, that might work easier, Peter. Do you have your laptop? We got a jump drive too. Okay. Just uh. Oh, I got uh, the HDMI. Let me grab the base. Perfect. Plan B is go to the PDF. Uh, so this this drawing right here actually. Would shows you mind expanding to full screen? Uh, easier for it to pick yep. up on the TV as we broadcast this. There you okay. go. Perfect. Thank you. Technology is great. When it uh, works. <laughs> so this uh, this exhibit shows uh, the existing is on the left and then the proposed is on the right. And so what's not colored in is shows what uh, would be existing uh, post-construction. Uh, so th these are the elevations that we're just describing. The top, which shows the uh, front elevation, which would be fronting gulf. Uh, the, the rear elevation is shown there on the bottom where the pay canopy is over on the left and the entrance to the car wash would be on the right-hand side. Uh, this is the uh, east elevation on the top, uh, showing the pay canopy on the right-hand side, and then the, the retail uh, portion of the buildings on the left side, uh, which have its own uh, se segregated entrance. And then the, uh, the Barrington Avenue or Barrington Road side is shown on the bottom, uh, which shows all the glazing and the architectural features of the car wash uh, fronting Barrington. I won't mix 2595 with 2590. Thank you. Does that conclude your presentation then? Yes. Okay. Um, Pete, do you have anything you want to add to this at all? Uh, just simply, I think one of the um, points, in addition to needing to do a full-blown plan review, obviously we've still got, um, we haven't really gotten to the detailed level of the, the site. We will look at things like uh, parking demand with the, obviously the larger building, um, just some of the site design issues that need to be evaluated. Uh, and a special use permit would be required ultimately for the gas station car wash. The one kind of unusual issue on this site, and will show up again on the other site, is the uh, the fact that Barrington Road IDOT has a on the books from the early 90s a uh, strategic regional arterial plan, which they do these long-range plans, contemplating someday if they choose to widen Barrington Road to six lanes, um, they kind of evaluate that and and what that may mean for properties along the the frontage. In this case, uh, that. Back in the early 90s, they had projected that could result in possibly a 25-foot taking along the Barrington Road frontage, which would obviously reduce the size of the property. Um, the good news here, the existing shell station was built in the late 90s, um, and this plan was uh, known about at that time, and they actually designed the existing building to um, leave somewhat of a cushion there. 
Um, the owner still owns that land. IDOT has not taken it. It's not uh, anything that's been officially um, consummated. But they were able to develop the shell site in a way that it would really not be affected by a widening if and when it ever happens. Um, so th in this case, um, after some discussions, uh, these designers have actually taken a similar approach and they're trying to see if they can do the same thing, uh, achieve their goals with the redeveloped site, which obviously a much more dramatic, uh, larger building, uh, hopefully a much more productive uh, business on the corner, and again, still try and avoid any future impacts. Um, so that's kind of where they're at and that, that issue's out there. Um, IDOT is currently studying possible improvements at Golf and Barrington at the intersection just to improve the actual intersection, but they're not necessarily looking at widening Barrington Road at this point. Um, so that's something that's yet to be determined. Uh, one of the next steps, the next step, uh, would be the petitioner talking directly to IDOT about their plans and kind of get firsthand from them what impacts they may be able to glean uh, and have that kind of play into their design process for this site. So, but hopefully they'll be able to move forward um, regardless of what may come in the future. So that's kind of where they're at on this property. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Falafis. Uh, a few comments, and then I think I'll end with a question slash request. Only because you brought up the term 2.0, but I'll get to that. Um, first of all, I, I love the Ricky Rocket since there now. And my family and I are high volume users. Excellent. And the promises that were made about the car wash all held to be true. Um, and I, I think this site, it, it's a, it, I think it has some exciting possibilities because, and I'm glad to hear you're raising the building because I always thought it was, it was kind of a train wreck building. It never really looked nice. Uh, and the unique feature it does have but that the other building doesn't have is you have that drive through to the west side there. So I don't know, maybe the opportunity for our fifth Starbucks, perhaps. Just a recommendation, <laughs> my favorite. Um, but looking forward also to, you know, the, the, um, that, that car wash never seemed to, to work very well. Um, and then about the car wash, uh, like at the existing Ricky Rockets, every once in a while, you know, the car wash has to be maintained, which I completely understand. If there's some way to communicate like a, a button push or something that the car wash is being maintained, so perhaps you don't select a car wash thinking as soon as you're done fueling, you can jump into the car wash line because the orange cone's there, that would be really cool. It would also be cool if you could uh, use the codes interoperably at each gas station. You know what I mean? If the point, your point of sale would have to be tied in together with the software. But like I said, you brought up the 2.0 thing. <laughs> so it got me thinking of that. And I'm a software guy. Do you know somebody can do that? Yeah. <laughs> I know a few people could do it, but I don't know if you'd want to hire them. But uh, the final thing is, I noticed on your elevations here, you have the rocket, but the Ricky's not on the rocket. And is it going to be? He will be. He okay. Will be. Because that could be a deal breaker. Just saying. <laughs> That's all for me. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody? <laughs> Trusty Newell. He brought it up. I want to know which way Ricky was going to be pointing. <laughs> this one's pointing north. I don't know. Pointing west. <laughs> He'll be pointing west. Yeah, the rocket He'll will be going west. He'll point west. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mr. Heidner, do you want to chirp in on that? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions? <clears throat> Trustee Stanton. Is there any talk, Pete, of uh, using any feet on Golf Road as well, besides the Barrington Road, to expand golf into six lanes there? No, that's not part of the study. Um, the, the SRA study that we're referencing is specific for the whole Barrington Road corridor all the way from the, you know, Lake Street, basically DuPage County line, all the way to the north beyond the village boundaries. So this is a Barrington Road focused but, plan. But, but Peter, do we know about what they're, st they're studying the intersection now, so I don't think we really know what they're going to be confined by. Our transportation director can better answer that. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, the extent of the uh, changes on Golf Road, or that's really one of the points of doing this phase one study. Um, we haven't heard anything definitive yet, but most likely the scale improvements will be focusing on uh, additional turn lanes. So they might be going to, to dual turn lanes or lengthening existing turn lanes, um, trying to get as much increased capacity out of the intersection footprint as they can without doing you know, major 
through lane additions. Sure, it would be nice to have two turn lanes there on uh, yeah. golf going on to Barrington. Right, but that, that'll come through the, uh, through the phase one study. Okay. Uh, Trustee no or Flavis. I forgot one more question. Uh, is the gas station going to stay a shell? Or do you, maybe you don't know right now, but... Yes, it will stay. It is? Okay. I mean, not that mobiles are bad. It was just mm -hmm. like we have 11 of them already. I was just curious if it was going to stay. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. This is just a courtesy review, so there is not a vote required. But if you want to stay there for the next, uh, <laughs> the next um, part of this, you are certainly welcome to. Um, item number two, request by 2595 West Golf LLC for a courtesy review of a proposed retail building on the former Clark Gas Station site at 2595 West Golf Road. Um, again, I would like to remind you that your appearance before the Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee does not constitute any Village Board endorsement, support, or implied approval of the pro subject property. Um, you should also understand that the final project approval or denial shall only occur through official Village Board action. So if you would like to give us your presentation for this property. Uh, so hopping across the street, south side of golf. Uh, so this is the southeast corner of Barrington and golf. Uh, uh, Mr. Heidner just uh, recently purchased his property uh, in 2016. It's a three quarter acre site. Uh, so far, the USTs have been removed. The uh, demo is expected later this year, right, spring, summer. Uh, uh, the site is contiguous to the Mariano Shopping Center and the other uh, retail complexes. Let me skip through the Ricky Rockets portion. Uh, the photo you see here is the, uh, our proposed site plan overlaid on an aerial. Uh, we're, we're proposing to remove the two uh, kind of more or less full access driveways closest to the intersection, kind of best practices, and push them uh, and utilize the existing two accesses furthest away from the, the entrance, one in Golf and one in Barrington. Uh, we would raise, completely erase the existing improvements and build a 6,776 square foot retail center with approximately three to five uh, retail tenants and associated parking. Uh, we believe that the use is very consistent with the Mariano shopping complex and uh, the other goods and service uh, um, uh, on that side. Uh, and it's important to note that uh, well, Mr. Heidner has the uh, kind of the uh, the Ricky Rockets Fuel Center with the retail building next to it. Uh, uh, further north, this this retail center will be a, a standalone project since they're not uh, next to each other, so they will have separate architecture, uh, as shown right here, uh, which obviously is a very nice upscale retail center. Um, this uh, so the Gulf Road elevation is the one on top, and then the elevation facing Barrington Road, which would be the side of the building, uh, is shown there on the bottom. In the rear of the building, we don't have an elevation over here, but it'll also. If you could speak brick. into the microphone, please. I'm sorry. The rear of the building will be full brick as well. It won't be cinder block. It'll be your face brick, like you see in the front. Thank you, Pete. Do you want to add anything onto this? Project? Uh, so the, the Barrington Road studies that we talked about, basically uh, similar impacts here, except just because of the, the way intersections work with turn lanes and everything, the, the future six lane configuration of Barrington Road actually could take as much as 37 feet from, the, from this property. Um, this particular site, the existing closed gas station was not ever designed to leave a buffer for that because it, it really predated those studies. Um, and honestly, the petitioner, when they developed this plan, really did not um, have a full awareness of that on, on their end. And, and um, so we've highlighted that in reviewing this uh, IDOT, the past plans. So again, here, their next step is absolutely going to be to go speak with IDOT about, um, you know, if there's any updates or if they can ascertain something more specific on this corner. Um, obviously, 37 feet from this property, which is already... Uh, relatively small would be a very dramatic uh, impact and, and certainly could affect their thinking and how they design it. So that's really where it stands. Otherwise, absent that issue, it, uh, as they pointed out, it, it essentially fits into uh, what's, a, what's occurring there. Uh, we would end up with one gas station on the corner and the other project and not here, which uh, hopefully would end up with a more productive, uh, you know, what's left as far as retail versus gas station um, since neither of those two sites seem to be, um, haven't been very productive for quite some time. Um, that's really all we have to add there. Thank you. 
Are there any, Trustee Stanton? Uh, cross easements with the uh, Marianos, are you thinking of getting one? Uh, we really not, have not looked into that at this time. I guess that probably depends on what IDOT tells us as well. Yeah, it might be uh, behoove you to try to look into that because if you can get cut out of 37 feet, you may need parking on right. Mariano's property as well. Right. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Mike. Oh, Trustee Gata. Oh, I know I'm a long way off. From no, you you're that, way right? at the other end. <laughs> it's cold over here. <laughs> yes. Uh, what type of uh, tenants are you looking to go into those uh, buildings? It would be similar to like you're seeing in the uh, Mariano Center neighborhood retail, uh, you know, just depending on who wanted to go there. We would market to those types of uses, you know, maybe some food uses or, you know, just general retail. Not in competition with the other ones that are in that shopping center? That, that wouldn't be the, that's not the goal. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Trustee Newell. Uh, just one question. Uh, so then when you be putting this building and you're taking away this old gas station and you're taking all those old tanks out and everything else and yes, the tanks doing are remediation already. and everything? and Yeah, they've been removed already. Oh, they have. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, are there any other comments? Thank you for your um, presentation. We look forward to you coming back to us. Thank, Thank you. you. There you go. Thank you. Item number three, request by Odessa, Illinois, LLC for approval of a restrictive covenant and lease agreement for maintenance of a retaining wall in the right-of-way. So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Um, Pete, is, would you like to comment on this or... Actually, Mark, Mark will. All right. I'll take Mark. <laughs> so during the construction of the Odessa site improvements, um, there were many changes out in the field uh, necess necessitated by the field conditions. One of those was uh, the presence of some underground utilities, private utilities, on the west side of Beverly Road. Um, Odessa submitted plans uh, to the village, and we were reviewing them when we noticed the contractor was already building the wall. Um, when the wall was completed, it was found to be encroaching in the village right of way. Uh, because of the presence of the underground utilities, Odessa requested the village to consider a, uh, the attached restrictive covenant and license agreement to allow the wall to exist in the right of way. Uh, it doesn't encroach by uh, into the uh, Areas right next to the pavement, it's back of the pavement a ways. <clears throat> and Odessa is accepting all maintenance uh, in perpetuity as well as uh, providing the village with an uh, indemnification uh, should there be any damage or accidents resulting from the wall being there. Uh, so the agreement was uh, drafted with uh, Assistant Corporation Council and uh, the Odessa's attorney, and we've uh, gone through it uh, very carefully and believe that it does meet our, suit our purposes. Thank you. I would like to mention that on page four of the agreement, um, section 15, the village's zip code is wrong. Mm -hmm. Only one of them's wrong. Only one. <laughs> it looks like just two of the, the numbers were transpired, so. That we'll fix that before we, <laughs> before we have it signed. And he has his own zip code. <laughs> and thank you, Trustee Newell. I think you and I are on the same page on that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Trustee Gated, did you have a question? Yes. Did you say the wall is up already? Yes. And what's the height of it? Um, it varies. You it's about uh, maybe two feet at the north end, and then it's a little... Uh, maybe three and a half at the right at the intersection where it curves around onto the Odessa site. Okay, and what is it? Is it brick? Is it? It's, uh, uh, is it it's one of those unilock walls that you see all over the place. I mean, it's an attractive looking wall. Think of the name Keystone, even though it's not that brand. Similar to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when was it, when was the wall completed? November. And we're just finding out about it now. No, we found out about it. Actually, I wrote this agenda item three weeks ago. We just missed the last uh, PB&Z committee meeting. The, the trustee Gator, the big part was putting the legal minds together and having them go back and forth in terms of it. Once staff looked at it and actually looked at the justification of where the existing utilities were, there is no real other option given what the wall has to do, what it has to retain. So the real issue was to... Uh, 
both legal teams, Odessa's and the villages, working out the agreement. Very good. That's all. Thank you. Trustee Falafis. As popular of a time as it is for the building of walls, and just the discussion point, um, <laughs> I had to throw that out there. Um, yours is much shorter, and it's done. And it's done. Um, Correctly. That's right. It, it, we could ask Elgin to pay for it, but that wouldn't yeah. be funny. Anyway, um, in all seriousness, the uh, it's really a housekeeping issue, right? Yes. In terms of this. Okay. Yes. And once we identified that it was in the right of way, Odessa did accept responsibility and okay. said, what, whatever you guys need, write the agreement, we'll, we'll, we'll assign it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Stanton. How far are the utilities actually from this wall? Uh, there's two or three that run through there and... Underneath it? <laughs> Adjacent to it, but not under, not actually underneath the wall. But if you move the wall back, then you would be on top of the utilities, or at least within the area that would need to be excavated if they needed to come in and uh, replace uh, replace the utility. Yeah, are the companies going to be able to do that without uh, destroying the wall? They will have enough room behind the wall. Actually, at the wall curves onto the Odessa property, they might have to take the wall down if they needed to get in right where it crosses underneath. But for the most part, it's parallel and back far enough from the wall. Now, if they have to take the wall down, do we have them redo the whole wall at that point? It, you still have the same problem. Issue. I mean, okay. we identified that and said, I mean, our first volley back to Odessa was, it. take it down, put it back where, it, you know, where it's out of the right of way. And they said, well, because of the utilities, we really can't do that. So if they needed to take down a portion of the wall, we'd say just rebuild it and make sure that it's built correctly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, seeing none, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> Item number four, request by Cal Atlantic for approval of a minor site plan amendment to add an additional house model at Devonshire Woods Estates. So moved. A second. Thank you. Uh, would you like to state your name and address, please? And if you have a presentation sure, let me, let me for see us. if I can figure out how to hook this up. Uh, my name is Omar Rodriguez. Uh, I'm the vice president of land for Cal Atlantic. Uh, the address is 1141 East Main Street, East Dundee, Illinois. The expert is on his way. Lovery. <clears throat> okay, good. New laptop. So, I'm not really quite sure how to how to fix one. Different adapter. Thank you. I was scared there for a minute. I was going to have to use the projector. <laughs> Uh, good evening. Thank you. Um, again, Omar Rodriguez with Cal Atlantic. Thank you for taking the time. So uh, Cal Atlantic purchased um, 38 home sites in, Devon, in Devonshire Woods Estates uh, in May of 2016, received approvals from the village uh, for product uh, site plan approval, I believe in March of memory serves of 2016. Uh, approval was for six uh, two-story plans, one ranch plan, and a uh, modern split level plan. That is the, uh, the lineup that was approved by the village um, early in 2016. Uh, the Ridgefield was the ranch, the Kensington was the split level, and the balance of the plans were uh, two-story plans. Um, we've been open for sales since December of this year. Uh, took a little longer to get open than I think we would have liked. Um, the good news is we've had a, a, a great deal of success, a lot of interested people coming through the doors. Um, and one of the items of feedback that we received was the desire of the consumer to have a larger ranch. Um, so the Ridgefield uh, that I just referenced starts at 2,170 square feet. Um, the request before you today is to add the Carrington, which is a approximately 2,400 and change square foot uh, ranch, a uh, larger kind of 
different program, offers an optional fourth bedroom, some separate dining and living areas, uh, a little bit, lives a little bit differently than the current ranch that we offer. Uh, the Carrington, it's been a while, but um, if you'll recall, was actually uh, a plan of discussion during our meetings originally in March of 2016. At that time, we couldn't commit to add the plan because uh, it's an extremely wide, large footprint plan, and we weren't um, sure that uh, it would satisfy the F FAR and lot fit requirements of the community. So um, we've subsequently kind of looked into that, and it does fit on about 50% of the home sites uh, in the community, and it is something that we think uh, we, we would benefit in adding, and, and as well as the general public. Um, Carrington itself, like I said, is 2,436 square feet. It's more than 65 feet wide, which is why we were hesitant to uh, agree to add it in the first place. It uh, has a covered porch, three-car garage, uh, consistent with the rest of the community. Um, I think your packet included uh, A, B, and C elevations, but uh, these are them for the Carrington. We actually didn't get it. We had the Ridgefield in our packet. Oh, we I'm had the sorry. Ridgefield elevations and floor plan. However, uh, Mr. Norris did pass on uh, through an email mm -hmm. uh, in PDF. Uh, I have seen it before. So. Okay. So, um, you know, like I said, a, more of a streetscape <clears throat> presence than the Ridgefield larger plan. The Ridgefield itself is about 50, 50 feet wide. This one's in excess of 65. Uh, this one, because of its width, allows you to do some different things on the front elevations, offer a front porch area, um, which this uh, buyer type uh, typically enjoys. Um, in comparison to the Ridgefield, as I mentioned, it's a wider plan, larger square footage, still includes uh, this three-car garage, um, will include all of the kind of the typical features that we agreed to in uh, Devonshire Woods Estates in general, concrete driveways, the hardy siding, uh, those types of things. Um, what I did here was kind of include a side-by-side -side of the Ridgefield and the uh, Carrington, just so you could get a general sense for the differences in the elevations. Um, I apologize that you didn't get the uh, Ridgefield uh, in the first place, but uh, the one on the left is the Carrington, the one on the right is the Ridgefield. This is the B elevation. Um, this is the C, which includes a dormer uh, in addition to the gables, et cetera, and as, like I mentioned before, the front porch. Again, the plan will include um, kind of the typical features that, uh, that uh, we uh, include in all plans in the community. Um, I should mention, you know, um, I mentioned that, uh, you know, interest in the community has been extremely high. Uh, I believe we have 10 or 11 sales to date. We've been open a little over two months. Um, wow. So there's a, there's a lot of interest in the community. Um, hopefully I'll be before you sometime next month to start the mm -hmm. process for um, Beacon Point 2 Amber Meadows. So, uh, you know, we're excited about kind of what's happening out here. I, it finally feels like the market is starting to lift a bit. Uh, and uh, I don't have to be the, you know, the builder coming in and kind of talking doom and gloom all the time. So uh, we appreciate everything the village has done to work with us uh, and lo are looking forward to uh, what's to come. With that, uh, I don't know if Pete wants to add anything. Staff, do you have anything you would like to add? Well, yes. First of all, the fact that the new model plan is not in the packet is completely my fault, and I apologize for that, and that should be in there. Um, if this moves forward to the board agenda, I will uh, make sure that it gets added. I, um, Thank you. We, ha we have it, <laughs> and it, has a, it has a, is as shown on the, the screen there. I apologize for that. Um, otherwise, I think Mr. Rodriguez covered everything. It's, it's a <coughs> slightly larger model. Obviously, the architecture is in keeping with um, everything else that was approved out there. Um, the width issue was definitely something that needed time to evaluate because uh, you recall it's a heavily wooded site. We have uh, specific tree preservation areas that really do restrict uh, footprints to some degree. So uh, they had to look at that carefully. Um, and some of the lots are actually a little bit smaller. Some are larger because the way it was subdivided originally with the trees. Um, so that, that was part of the, the delay, and we, we had to look also with them to make sure if they're going to pro propose this model that it actually would be able to comply with our zoning codes. Um, other than that, it, it is uh, generally consistent and, and is larger, so um, it, it's not unusual for something like this to happen once a builder gets into a, a development where they, they have a chance to actually get the first-hand uh, 
reaction from the public and the buying customers and make adjustments in their product lineup. So um, this is this is pretty typical to have something come forward like this. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Stanton? Uh, I get to go first because um, I'm closest. Just, yeah. <laughs> uh, the requisite... Oh, wow. uh, Price that you're going to have on this the list price. What what is it going to be? Uh, so this home will uh, base price will be in the 390s to start, um, and uh, I'd expect homes to close in the mid to high fours um, once someone has a chance to customize the home. Does a person have to have a three car garage? Is that something yes, that we required? Yes. So the the entire community has a three car garage requirement. Okay. All right. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Flavis. Um. Question, you mentioned there were 38 total lots. No, we purchased 38 total. The Correct. Yeah. It's, I'm with you there. Um, I'm just, just saying it to remind myself. And you've already sold 11 or 13, you said? 10 or 11. 10 or 11. If memory serves, yeah. Um, have any of those been the Ridgefield model? Yes. So we've sold two or three Ridgefields so far. Ah, okay. Um, that negates my next question. Um <clears throat> is I, I was I was in agreement I didn't like the Ridgefield and this would I think would have been a, a way better option but uh, apparently you're finding a market for the Ridgefield we are um, does this model floor pan have a living room it does okay <laughs> yeah fantastic thank you my second question <laughs> I didn't see it when I saw the plans originally <laughs> well you didn't ask yeah, and I I know you're wondering so I saw a dining room I didn't see a living room <laughs> It has a parlor, you too. You know that question is going to be asked every time. Every time. I don't want people getting cheated out of a room, that's all. <laughs> Glad I got to go first. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Trustee Newell, did you have a when question? When I'm looking at that front, is that all brick? Yes, sir. So this is the B elevation, but the first floors are brick. You can see it. And okay. Because I remember the residents that were there were very, very concerned about the front of all of the homes. And, sure. But as long as this conforms just what with the other ones, and that is the brick front, then that's fine. Great, thanks. And I won't ask about the living room. <laughs> <laughs> you just did. Right. <laughs> Trustee Newell, did you have a just question? Just real quick, and I want to make sure I understand. There's the Ridgefield and the Carrington, and you're going to still offer both of those. We are together yes okay one's not replacing another even though some people have already bought the Ridgefield correct, correct. yeah I mean okay. I they they're uh, inside the home the lifestyle the program is different so they'll cater to two different buyer types they will yeah okay the, the Ridgefield all. doesn't have a living room oh you gotta let him know <laughs> okay just... I already saw that <laughs> Trustee or, uh, Mr. Norris by the way that's an inside job I, I guess I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gathered yeah <laughs> I just wanted to clarify the response to trustee Gata. the Carrington's elevation and the brick issue or masonry issue is addressed exactly the same way the board's approval was on the models approved for Cal Atlantic um, for Devonshire Woods Estates which has been a little bit of, of a controversy Correct. all right so dormer areas like you see right. on this uh, unit right. here are not if you go back are not brick Right. Um, there are some options like the bay window Correct. that they have that the bottom part underneath the window is not brick. Yep. So the, this, the Carrington elevations will be held to the exactly the same standards that the Planning Building Zoning Committee the board approved when they approved Cal Atlantic for Devonshire Woods Estates. Okay. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Can I ask you a question about the brick? Is it, yes, ma'am. Is it face brick or full masonry brick? So the, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the location. It, it has to do with kind of structural elements. So depending on what we have to load and how we can load it in terms of weight, uh, the material, it's the exact same brick. They literally take it to a, to a facility and have to custom make kind of the, the elements. Um, so as uh, Mr. Norris just mentioned, it depends on where it is. If you looked at it visually, it would look no different. It looks exactly the same. It's exactly the same brick. It's the same die lot, everything. They, they literally have to, it's actually more expensive to do the upper elements of this than it is the lower because, you, because of the labor involved in constructing it. 
So that'd be a good test for somebody, see if they could identify which was face and which was I, masonry. I, and they I, would be... We have a model out there. You know, people are more than welcome to go look, yeah. Great. I think it looks great. Are there any other questions from the board? Is there anybody from the audience that would like to say anything? Well, hearing no other questions, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And the ayes have it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Item number five, request approval of an ordinance declaring village-owned land as surplus and authorizing public notice of negotiations to acquire and redevelop village property. So moved. A second. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kramer, would you like to give us some comments on this? Since Actually, I, I was going to. Oh, Mr. Norris, would you? Um, the village owns a parcel on Apple Street that was granted to the village for a well back when uh, the original shopping center and parcel A were built. Uh, when the village went to Lake Michigan water, the well that existed there was capped and removed in accordance with uh, IEPA procedures. Uh, the owner of the Hoffman Plaza Shopping Center is in the process of doing a significant redevelopment of that center and in order to address the stormwater issues that arise because that center was built pre-MWRD standards, uh, they need a little additional property and they've asked the village to consider selling it. Um, the village um, had an appraisal done of the property. Uh, we know the, the fair market value of the property. We are following a process that's uh, statutory uh, to sell it, which means uh, the board is uh, going through the process to declare it surplus. We will advertise it in the paper. Uh, anyone can bid on it. It's up to the village board to decide who the, the board would sell it to, the village would sell it to. Uh, one of the requirements is that it, um, uh, the, the whoever does bid on it has to tell us how they would use it and hopefully it will fit into the approved TIF plan, tax increment financing plan, and redevelopment standards that already exist for that area. This is the first step in selling the property. Thank you, Mr. Norris. Are there any other questions from the board? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> Item number six. Request by Das Biergarten LLC for an amendment to the two-year agreement between the Village of Hoffman Estates and Das Biergarten LLC for, village, for the Village Green Beer Garden 2016 to 2017 regarding A, participation in the Plots Concert event in 2017, Section 7.C.3 and B, Section 7.1, or uh, B, excuse me, Fourth Fest. So moved. Second. Thank you. Mark, would you like to comment? So almost a year ago, the uh, village approved a, a two-year agreement with Das Beer Garden for continuing the uh, Das Beer Garden at the Village Green. Um, last year, uh, Das Beer paid a total of uh, almost $47,000 to the village in commissions, fees, taxes, and utilities. Uh, that included uh, amounts from for the Fourth Fest as well as the Platts concert and the Thursday night concerts, and the rest was from the uh, everyday operation of the beer garden. So that's a two-part request. The first part is uh, probably a little uh, easier and less complicated than the second part. The Platts concert, the original agreement last year gave Das Beer Garden the ability to be open last year, 2016, for the Platts concert, and said that the board would need to approve them to come back in 2017. Uh, so that's the first part of this request. Uh, at the January 9th Platts Concert Commission, the commission voted unanimously to recommend to the village board uh, that Platts, uh, that Das Beer Garden be invited uh, to participate, participate again in the Platts Concert. Um, so that's the first part of that. And it would be under the same terms as last year, which was a per keg uh, amount and they also uh, facilitated uh, the purchase of the same Hofbrau beer for the village or for the Platts Concerts Commission's uh, beer tent. If there's in and a sale, a, a, a percentage of uh, some food items, the pretzels. Right, correct. They were allowed to uh, sell just the pretzels, no other food items. Right. Um, so, are there any questions on that portion? If, if not, I. Go on to the fourth fest. 
Yeah. Trustee would you, Gita. Would you explain that again? Sure. Should you say that they can serve their uh, only pretzels and nothing else, or what? During the other times, the regular season, if you go out there on a Wednesday afternoon in July, you could buy a brat or a hot dog or yeah. what else? Well, the pretzels with the cheese and so forth, yes. So basically, that kind yeah. of stuff. The, for the <laughs> Platts concert. You that you only buy the beer when you're out there, Mark. <laughs> I was going to say only the brat, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> so as not to compete with the other food being provided by Levy in the uh, past and some of their selections, because they do the German plates and they do some sausages and they do other things. Uh, the consensus last year was to restrict them to just pretzels and the beer. So that's what was the deal last year, and that's what's being proposed for this year. And that's acceptable to the proprietor of Das Beer. I know, because he's in the audience, and I was going to say, is that acceptable to you? Andrew, would you come up and identify yourself for the record, please? Yes, hi. Uh, Andrew Hartman, owner of Das Beer Garden, LLC, uh, 9196 Falcon Greens Drive, Village Lakewood, Illinois. Thank you. And yes, Trusty Gata, that is. That is acceptable to you. Okay, that's fine with me then. Okay, Mark, do you want to go into the second part then? Or, were there, oh, I'm sorry, Trusty Falafis? I, I was just going to say the pretzels Andrew sold with the authentic German cheese he had was what Levy had was in no way competition. Absolutely just not. Blew him off the face of the earth. Right. Um, Although I, th you know, he, and it was so successful, the event was so successful last year. There was a couple of times where they almost ran out of beer. Yeah. We had to do some, <laughs> ran out of beer. some, uh, you know, some uh, fast calling with the distributor. So uh, the the event together was successful, and uh, we look forward to uh, again partnering this year. Like Mark said, we we all voted unanimously to have you know the same. Hopefully, we'll have better weather, so we, we get a bigger right. lunch crowd. Uh, this year, but uh, and it, as long as you admit that our fest was more fun than the Fourth of July, I think I'll vote for it. <laughs> Other than that, we're good, right? Not going there. Okay. No comment. <laughs> I could totally concur with Trustee Falafis said. Um, with the addition of Dash Spear this year, we had so many compliments on on everything that that you brought to the um, Plots concert, especially with your connection with. Schamberger beer and the decorations that he provided for us and that you provided for us. It was, I think, um, partnering with you for the Potts concert was a smart move on our part, your part, a wonderful addition. Thank you very much, Trustee Vanberg. I think it's honestly just the beginning of a amazing partnership. I mean, we've seen how well things have gone, you know, over the past season versus us not being a part that first season, and I think it's just a huge stepping stone in growing this to what it truly can become. And we really like your later hosen too. You look real cute in those later hosen. <laughs> See, I couldn't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trustee Gata. Yes, Mark. Let's go back to the same question. Okay. It could. Yeah. As far we are as on TV. what items do they have that would be in competition to Levy? So Andrew, what are, what are the food items what? did you sell besides the, um, the hot dogs and the brats? So every day we sell hot dogs, brats, and pretzels. Right. Um, this year I actually have been in touch with um, David, the, the health inspector, David. Uh, Benazinski? Yes. Yes. That last name is a hard name to pronounce. <laughs> um, because there are two items that I'm interested in actually bringing on this season um, and wanted to get his thought process on if we could actually do this. And Out of curiosity, what are the items you're just talking about? Uh, it would be cheese, a different sort of cheese not served with an actual pretzel, okay. um, as well as a cake. So. If I could interrupt, Trustee Gata, just for a second. If we're going to look at changing the menu, it's, this item would need to go back to the Plants Concert Commission because their recommendation was based on not changing anything. Uh, because they're, if you remember prior to this, to last year, yeah. they didn't even want Das Beer open. They're, they're a little bit protective of, of the, the menus and the foods, like they were protective of the beer. We've opened up a little bit. 
the, so the, the recommendation is in front of you, and that doesn't mean it has to stay that way, but if it's not going to stay, it needs to go back um, to look at the menu change, or it can come back at a later date. But what's really in front of the, the committee right now is Platt's concert as it was last year with the restriction only doing pretzels and every other thing with the Platt's concert remaining unchanged. Otherwise, my recommendation would be sending it back to the Platt's Concert Commission to review any changes. I was just concerned because the word Levy was brought up, and I, as far as what Levy has as compared to what the, right. this and bar has, or the garden, uh, that's, that was... Uh, I understand. I understand completely. Yeah. Um, Levy sold a broad hamburger. They sold a, um, a brat-like uh, hot dog. They served a, then a German plate. And that was really the, and they schnitzel, mm -hmm. schnitzel, and they had the, those items, which uh, were their meal items, and the pretzel obviously didn't. What Andrew Kerr in the past has had available with the brat and the yes. hot dog yeah. would have with Levy. So if he has new ideas, once he gets the endorsement from the food inspector, he can go to the Platts Concert Commission and say, what do you think? Can I add these? That can come back here if we need to. Okay. And this was more, just to clear up any confusion, this was more for, like, not any special event, these two items. This was more for a daily right. uh, consumption. Okay. So, Which is really clear. more up to you and David and not even up to yeah. us. So apologize for the confusion. Okay. Mark, do you want to continue then with B? Sure. So the fourth fest, uh, <clears throat> last year, uh, and the two-year contract includes... Fourth Fest last year and the Fourth Fest this year. So what's being proposed is to modify the terms for the Fourth Fest for 2017. Uh, last year, Das Beer paid a uh, alcohol vendor fee of $2,500, a food <coughs> vendor fee of $750, and that was to sell the pretzels. Um, in addition, they uh, provided a commission to the village of 35% of their sales, which is over the 15% um, higher than the regular commission uh, from day-to-day -day sales, which is just 20%. Um, <clears throat> when I did some rough calculations with the fees and with the commission, the, that amount didn't even cover the cost of buying the beer, much less adding in the labor and the other uh, costs that Andrew uh, incurred. So based on that and some uh, surveys, some other festivals, we're recommending to reduce the um, vendor fee, the alcohol vendor fee uh, to $1,000 and the commission down to 25%. 25. 25%. That'll give Andrew the ability to generate sales, uh, cover his costs, make a slight profit, if not a, an exorbitant profit, but at least he won't be in the hole at the end of the, uh, end of the fourth fest weekend. Um, we did note that there was a concern last year uh, and we tracked the beer sales in 2015 and 2016, and it was within $100 of each other. So the presence of the beer garden did not appear to detract from the normal sales during the fourth fest, which is one of the primary concerns, and we were, weren't sure how that was going to go. And it was complimentary as opposed to uh, taking sales away from the, uh, the regular uh, beer sales. And it's clearly two different markets, people that are looking for the cheaper Miller Lite versus a more expensive but heartier uh, Hofbrau beer. So I'm told I wouldn't. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any questions before the board? Andrew, do you want to add anything to that? or? I just want to say thank you again, honestly, for this amazing opportunity. Obviously, over the last two years, I think you guys have seen the success of the beer garden and just the, the progression of the, the outreach to the community and how many people come out and support it and just want to keep growing it and be a bigger part of Hoffman Estates and that village green area. Thank you. <coughs> Trustee Falafis. Um, about the 4th of July, I think the retooling of the metrics are good. And uh, as Mark, you were describing this, it reminded me of our Levy vote last week. Sometimes... Mark's able to put such good deals together that it, it actually does uh, put a squeeze on the the vendor or the supplier. Um, and 
we can have such a good deal that it, it, it hurts them, which hurts us in the end, believe it or not. Um, and, and, and at the heart of me, I'm a money guy. I didn't know how you were going to make money last year with that deal on the 4th of July. I can see it with us. Sure. Because we're the far better and superior commission. <laughs> but aside from that, the numbers were just, you know, really high. I mean, you would have, you would have had to have a blowout. Um, so... I think this is. I think this is good. Just in, say in yes. Sense, yes. You know. So, uh, aside from my self complimenting, um, I think it's a good deal. Yeah. I think it's fair. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Good. Thank you. Well, we do have a motion and a second on the floor, so let's vote on it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. <laughs> Item number seven: Request acceptance of Department of Development Services monthly report for Planning Division. So moved. moved. A second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Item number eight, request acceptance of, <coughs> excuse me, request acceptance of Department of Development Services monthly report for Code Enforcement Division. So moved. I'll second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And number nine, request acceptance of Department of Development Services monthly report for economic development and tourism. So moved. A second. Thank you. Are there any questions? Trustee Falafis. I heard your uh, get together on Thursday night was a raging success. Sorry uh, we all couldn't make it there, but I heard actually from some of the uh, companies and businesses uh, that were there with you that it was a really great event. Yeah, we, we had a good time. Um, as the mayor said, 60 people came out and not all of them stayed the entire time. We probably had 35 or 40 that ended up staying for the game. But it's always hard, I think, to get people not only to leave their office early, um, and if, if they're a broker in downtown Chicago, to get them to drive the hour, hour out here, yeah. um, but then to stay late into the night if they have families or something, it's tough. So I, I was, we were very pleased with 60 people coming out. And um, as the mayor said, we had, I think, 54 on the bus that we toured around. Um, That's so great. It was, a, it was a great time. Great wow. job. Thank you. Mr. Kramer, is there anything else you'd like to add? Nothing else. Okay. Thank you. Well, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. President's report? Yeah, just one more item as the Daily Herald reporter is leaving. Daily <laughs> Herald uh, did interview a gentleman who uh, had relayed his experience with the Hoffa State's Police Department on his Facebook page. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was great. self discharged large black man who at 1.30 in the morning got off the tollway because his wife wanted ice cream. He was inadvertently speeding. He was stopped by the police. He gave the police his registration and license and said, oh, by the way, I have a concealed carry um, license also. And he said he was concerned. It's 1.30 in the morning in Hoffman Estates. He's a big black guy with a gun. What's going to happen? And the police officer ran his record. It was fine, gave him a warning, and... He went on his way, and I think it speaks well to the professionalism of our police department and the necessity for people, the police and the non-police, to uh, try to cut down on some of the, the rhetoric and the, uh, the tension. So it was a great story. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, it was. Thank you for pointing that out. Is there any other business or items in review? I don't think so, so I will ask for a motion for adjournment. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it, and we are adjourned. Only for me to go into the next one. The <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're getting overtime tonight. I know, I'm telling you. If you want to take a break, I'll take it. But <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a break or no? No. Okay. I would like to call together the General Administration and Personnel Committee on this February 13th, 2017. May we have a roll call, please? Chairman Vandenberg. Present. Vice Chairman Stanton. Present. Trustee Mills. Trustee Newell. Present. Trustee Palafis. Present. Trustee Gaeta. Present. Mayor McLeod. Present. Thank you. We do have a quorum. I'd like to entertain a motion for approval of the minutes of January 9th, 2017. So moved. Second. Are there any additions or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And under new business, we have four items. Item number one, request approval of a resolution increasing the number of members for the Commission for Disabled Citizens from nine to 13 members. So moved. A second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Trustee Falafis. Uh, I have the benefit of residing with the chair, um, but I, I think it'd be beneficial for some of you to hear 
uh, other great ideas that the increase in number of uh, members will bring to the village. So, plus you've waited here all this time. Michelle, would you like to come up and say a few words? Not to put you on the spot. Mind just introducing yourself? I know we all know you. I'd love to. Michelle Palapas. I live at 3825 Bordeaux Drive in Hoffman Estates. Thank you. So, um, in general, what our commission is planning on doing, um, in light of the history of what's going on in our state, and I don't know if you know what is going on in the state of disability, and it's nothing current. In fact, it's years and years in the making. Currently, there's 19,000 people on the wait list for services in our state. We used to rank 51st, but because of a judge forcing some movement off that list, we've risen to the um, grand number, 47th in the nation. And so we've, we have a real catastrophic situation happening for our families that live in our communities. Um, what we're seeing is agencies starting to fold into agencies. We're starting to see parents looking for other places outside of schools, outside of agencies for help. And so believe it or not, we're starting to see more traffic on our commission. Not only traffic from our residents, traffic's from perimeter residents from other communities. We're also starting to see traffic from agencies calling us, asking us, hey, what are you doing as a commission? And so because of that, I've been out recruiting people and we've filled our commission at nine. And now we've had even more interest that people want to sit with us and try to strategize what's the best way we can collaborate to offer the most for the people who are in our community. And I'm all about collaboration, if we can make a stronger muscle for other people and use our resources well and not duplicate, you know, maybe we can create a better situation until we figure the rest out, if you will. So we're here requesting if we can expand our little commission and hope that you'll see the same. Thank you very much. It's a small commission, but it's a forceful, powerful one that does so much good work. Yes. So thank you very much. You're Are welcome. there any other questions before the board? Hearing none, we do have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The motion passes, congratulations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's a really cute top too, by the way. <laughs> Item number two, request acceptance of cable TV monthly report. So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Item number three, request acceptance of human resources management monthly report. So moved. I'll second. Questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And item number four, request acceptance of legislative operations and outreach monthly report. So moved. I'll second. Are there any questions for Jen? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. President's report? Nothing else, Madam Chair. Uh, we do not have any other items or items in review, but I would like to um, wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day for tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, may I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. I'll second. All those in favor, <clears throat> please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And we are adjourned.